now declare the uh, Caribou City Council meeting for December the 8th open. Uh, first item, is there any public input from anyone on any of the agenda items or anything else you'd like to bring up to Council tonight? You give your name at the podium and... Thank you. Wayne Vaughn. Uh, I'm here regarding 50, uh, 53 Katahdin Avenue. That'll be coming up later on the agenda. I'll give you a quick uh, background on that, and then uh, I'm here basically to ask for help regarding that property. Um, I was out of town on Thanksgiving week visiting my uh, children. Came back Monday, last Monday the 1st, and uh, started paying bills. As I started paying bills going through the stack, I noticed that I had a tax bill that was due while I was out of town on 53 Katahdin Avenue. I immediately came over to the uh, office here and talked to the city manager and uh, was told that uh, I would have to come to the council. I could not pay anything on that um, bill, and then I would have to come to the council because there's a new uh, rule that went into effect possibly this year um, that I was not aware of, but uh, she said it was. So um, that's the background. Um, I, uh, I obviously would like to pay uh, my taxes and, uh, and keep the property, and um, so that's why I'm here. Uh, I don't know if you have any questions or if I need to explain anything more, but that's the, that's the quick background on it. Um, All right. Is that it? Yeah. I guess we, when we come to it on the agenda, we'll... Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else? Okay. Any conflicts of interest from any of the city council meetings on any of the agenda items tonight? All right. Uh, authorization of minutes from the following meetings, November 24th, council meeting minutes, and October 14th, the special council meeting minutes. <coughs> so moved. Second. Moved by Councillor Cario, second by Councillor McDonough. Any questions or comments or changes to the minutes that are required? All those in favor? Passed unanimously. Consent agenda, November 20, 2014 Parks and Rec Department report, uh, November 2014 Fire and Ambulance Department report, the Library Department report, and approval of licenses. Any questions or comments on any of these? Do you have a Parks and Recreation report? No, that one did not make it in on time. Oh, okay. So we haven't <coughs> had that one yet. Um, the financials should have gone out as well, and that's not on. Yeah, it's list. not on here either. I saw that. Well, can we get a motion to pass the fire and ambulance report and the library report and the approval of licenses? So moved. Thank you. Moved by Councilor McDonough, second by Councilor Martin. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Approved. Junkyard permits. Manager Blease, do we need uh, to review these? We've got three junkyard permits up for <coughs> review. Uh, John Gilbert, Mark Netto, and One Steel. There's no major changes from last year, and there's recommended renewal for, I'm sorry, AIM, not One Steel. It should be AIM. Um, the council needs to hold a public hearing on this topic, after which we can take action. We'll declare a public hearing on the junkyard permits opened at 7.03. Any comments or any input for the junkyard permits from anyone anything from anyone on council last chance public hearing closed at 704 <coughs> mayor can i move that we uh, renew all all of these licenses second it moved by councillor martin second by councillor mcdonough to Renew the uh, permits for the listed junkyards. All those in favor? Unanimous. Next we have uh, Drumline Environmental. And I take it that's these two gentlemen here that I don't know. <coughs> They're going to make a presentation to us tonight. Is there... Uh, 
just a question. Is there any action expected from council or is this just for our benefit to have a better understanding of what they're doing? Or? The council can ask questions, make recommendations. Yeah. Um, I don't believe this council can uh, approve or deny the, no, the report. No. All right. Well, gentlemen, we'll turn it over to you. I have a list of talking points here that I'll refer to if you don't mind. Um, and then I have a, an aerial photo from Google of the uh, area that we're talking about. Uh, I don't have an easel to put this on, but uh, um, maybe we can put it on the chair. I apologize for those in the back. Uh, I'm Rich Fortin. I'm with the firm Drummond Environmental out of Portland, and um, I'm here with uh, Nick Hodgkins, who's with the Maine Department of Environmental Protection. Um, and we're, I'm here representing uh, Canadian Pacific Railroad, who is the owner of this property. And basically, uh, what we're talking about is a former bulk plant site, oil bulk plant site that existed years ago here on this this little area of, uh, outlined in red. Um, this broader piece of land that's around it is still owned by by the railroad. It's on the River Road with the uh, river to the west. Um, it's about a, a point, a two tenths of an acre piece of pro uh, property that's involved here in this in this project. Um, the reason why we're here is in um, going through this process with the DEP. Um, we uh, provided as public information to the city through um, uh, Tony, the code officer, we provided uh, information on this property and he suggested that we come before the council and explain what we're doing. So We appreciate that. That's what we're doing. Um, this uh, piece of property, you probably know the area since you all are from around here. It's uh, um, <coughs> undeveloped land that's uh, along River Road and it slopes uh, to the west toward the river. Basically, uh, with the upland on the on the uh, east side going up into the potato fields that are up um, <coughs> off River Road, the uh, the deposits here, the geology deposits, are made up of uh, uh, what we would term as uh, low permeability deposits, where water moves slowly through the ground, it takes a long time to move from one point to another. And the groundwater flow at this site will want to go in the direction of the river, so basically <coughs> it's from River Road to the west toward the river. Um, this was historically known as the L.B. Carter heating oil bulk plant property, and uh, or bulk plant site. It was leased uh, property from the railroad. It was a small postage stamp parcel that the uh, bulk tanks used to exist on. And the tanks were surrounded by an earthen berm, which you can still see evidence of that today. The tanks were removed uh, <coughs> some years ago. Um, it was leased as the uh, L.B. Carter plant uh, in 1976, and then it was later leased to Weber Oil Company, who operated it for a few years up until 1990. Uh, and they they uh, decommissioned the plant. They took away the tanks and so forth in 1997. Um, I've been involved in this project since about 1996, working for <coughs> Canadian Pacific, um, and we've been working with the DP on this project uh, since that time. Uh, historically, there was report of a of a market with a gas with a gas station associated with it. That was just. Um, off to the side, in the front of the pro in front of the where the bulk plant, this is where the bulk plant used to be, and just off to the side there was a, a small gas station there. Historically, back in the 30s and 40s and 50s, <coughs> the uh, gas station we believe had underground tanks uh, that are no longer there, um, and we don't know of any leaks from those tanks, but we know from the testing we've done in the soil under the bulk plant, under the oil bulk plant, that there are some constituents of gasoline in the soil and in the water, so so we presume that there was some type of a release historically. Um, so between 1992 and 2000, we've done 
uh, a number of investigations of the site to figure out uh, what's there. Um, in recent time, there were some spills from the bulk plant back in 79 and 84, which the DEP responded to and did some cleanup um, and uh, removed both contaminated soil and oil that was in the ground. Through the uh, investigations we've done, we tested drinking water wells around the property. Uh, we tested drinking water wells on the up, what we call the upgrading side, uh, across River Road, uphill. Uh, we tested a, a well that was inactive but was associated with a potato building that was uh, to the north. And we tested a resident's house that was to the south in the past. It's no longer there now. So all those wells we tested uh, um, and they didn't show any impact from the site. Um, <coughs> there's no buildings are remaining on the site. Uh, so there's no uh, no risk, no receptor risk is, is the way we look at it. Um, in the last couple of years, uh, we've evaluated the site in terms of the main remediation guidelines that apply in these cases. And those guidelines have you consider um, receptors that include residential, uh, a recreational type of use, um, commercial workers and, and construction workers. Um, where the site is just vacant land, the only uh, um, receptor that could be considered here is the recreational use, somebody that walks across the, that walks across the ground, uh, walks through the area. Um, but in our, all our testing that we've done, uh, there effectively is no contamination on the surface. Um, within the berm, the area where the tanks originally stood, if you go uh, within a foot of the ground surface, you could start to run into some contamination, but right at the surface, there's no, so there's no, no imminent threat or of exposure to anybody at this time, both to the, to the soil or the, or the groundwater. Um, so under these guidelines, uh, we've evaluated how to respond to this situation, and um, the proposal that we made to the DP that was accepted is to close the site uh, by um, putting a more uh, permanent cap or cover of soil over the over the area where the tanks used to exist, uh, and to place institutional controls on the property. Um, and as part of those institu institutional controls, we have a we call a soil management plan that's been developed and approved by the DEP, so that if the if somebody wants to develop and use this property in the future. Um, there is a mechanism to do that, um, and that would be through uh, working with the DEP and through the town uh, uh, as necessary to uh, have the development go forward in a way that um, can fully use the site but not get impacted by any residual uh, contamination that may be there. Um, if there were some residual contamination that were discovered or encountered during the development of the site. The soil management plan has a, a process where that is managed properly and taken care of properly so that there's no residual exposure uh, that results. Um, so that in a nutshell is, is uh, what's in the packet of information that you folks received in our site management plan that we uh, prepared and submitted to the DP and it was approved uh, earlier this year. Um, and we were in the process of uh, implementing the final stages of that plan, which was to you know, do the, the soil cover um, construction um, about a month ago, um, but we held off until we had a chance to, at Tony's request, until we had a chance to come, come before you. So at this point, we probably, probably won't get to that until you know, the weather's more favorable uh, to do that. Um, <clears throat> when we put an environmental covenant on the property, though the provisions of that environmental covenant, uh, the, the institutional controls will be that uh, uh, the land would stay open unless uh, there was a <coughs> need, unless there was an interest to change or develop it, in which case we'd come back to the town and the state to talk about that option. Uh, that there's no future use of groundwater allowed without, uh, again, prior scrutiny. Uh, there's no 
disturbance of the soil allowed. We put the cover on, it's going to remain as open space and be maintained that way. And then we have the soil management plan in place to manage it if we need it, and that the site will be monitored periodically to make sure that, that nothing has changed. Um, so that's what, that was, that's what would be in this uh, institutional control document to manage the site. Um, Nick Hodgkins from the DP uh, would like to have a um, little time to, to provide you with his uh, perspective on the project, and then we can go to questions if you have any. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Nick Hodgkins. I'm from the Maine DP. I'm the coordinator for the Voluntary Response Action Program. Thank the council for uh, having us here tonight to talk about the project. Um, as Rich said, um, you know, this site's had a long history of use and, and petroleum at it. Um, certainly in the early days uh, when there were some spills before 98, um, uh, our response services folks uh, dealt with those. Those are the guys that drive around the yellow trucks. Um, and uh, they dealt with the spills that were there when it was operational plant and, and during the time of decommissioning. Uh, in 98, the, uh, the um, CP applied to, along with Weber, applied to the um, VRAP program uh, to, to address the site and the closure of the site through the program. Um, we've been working with CP and Drumlin uh, since that time to, to, you know, investigate the site. We've looked at uh, uh, deep groundwater, shallow groundwater, soils, um, done a lot of work out there to define the problem. As, he's, as Rich said, uh, we've looked at um, you know, there's a well at the Brown residence uh, that was there on the corner. Uh, we've looked at that well. We've, we've collected samples from the groundwater wells. You know, looked at the impact, looked at what was there, what's the impact, what's the risk. Um, back earlier this year, Drumlin proposed to us um, a, a uh, cleanup plan, a remedial plan for the site that um, you know, addressed those risks that we'd identified, you know, looked at all the receptors. Um, it was certainly consistent with the guidance and policies and procedures that we have at the DEP, much like we clean up, you know, any other site in any other program at the DEP. And, uh, you know, we were satisfied with their approach given, uh, you know, the data that we have for the property, which is uh, pretty vast, actually. Um, and, uh, you know, look at that as a good reasonable solution to the property. So we, we've certainly expressed, um, we sent a letter approving the plan back in, I think, July. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're um, you know, certainly think it's the, the best approach and most cost effective uh, approach for the site given the level of risk that the site represents. Thank you. Councilor McDonough. Thank you both gentlemen for coming and enlightening us anyway a little bit more. But I have a question about future development. And I think I, I might have an understanding of what you've done here, but future development would maybe possibly require digging and anything like that. So what's involved if that were to, were to come to pass as far as any residual uh, effects of the past skills and stuff like that. Who is ultimately responsible for that particular cleanup or, or any future impact that may eventually le leach out further into the river or something like that? Now the owner is, the CP is the owner, they would be responsible um, if they were proposing to do that or in concert with somebody else. In developing the site, you, um, you could you don't necessarily have to dig into the location where there there's some residual petroleum. Uh, that could be become the parking lot for a, a building or uh, you know some other use. Then the actual structures can be that might require a foundation building can be off to the side. So you don't necessarily you can plan your development so you don't have to Around that you don't have area. to get into that soil. It, but if you need to get into that soil, that's where we have the soil management plan mm -hmm. established, and that has that was in the packet, right, and that right, uh, right. that defines how the process would work, where there would be uh, uh, discussions with the state, and obviously through the building process here, 
uh, there would be discussions on how that soil, if it was going to be encountered, how that soil would be handled. Maybe it's going to be dug up and, and taken to a facility for disposal. Who would be obligated for that portion of the removal of that product? It would be the owner of the property the or, the or a developer if a developer had an agreement with the owner to... <coughs> okay, to right. uh, so surface... Well, yeah. Can I just follow up on it? So surface construction, even if you over that piece of property, as long as you didn't enter or violate the subsoil where the, where the potential contamination may be, would that be all right? Could you put a you, you could put a parking lot if you put a building with a slab. Yeah. Uh, typically, what's done is they uh, put in a ventilation sub slab ventilation system just as a protective uh, measure, okay. to uh, so that there isn't any chance that vapors would get into the building. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Councilor Martin? In, uh, in today's dollars, what would it cost to clean that? I mean, like, how deep is it? And I mean, my question is, it must be expensive since you're not doing that. Well, it, it is an expense, but it's also, um, you know, you, the, the, to put, resor put resources to that property, when there isn't a risk or there isn't a, a a reward, if you will, at this point in time, is doesn't doesn't make sense for the owner. So let's say you you the CP decides to sell and and the person that buys it wants to clean it up. You have an idea of how much? Maybe DEP would know better. It, it, that will be. I don't want to sound evasive, but that will, it could be hundreds of thousands of dollars. But the, it it's going to depend on what the development is, what the perceived risks are. And then the cleanup is gauged to address those risks. So if you have a development and the risks are going to be not very significant, then the cleanup to address that might not be very significant. On the other hand, if you had a development where you're going to be very intrusive, that was going to get into a lot of the soil that's there, and, and we're talking a small space, it's a couple hundred square feet, uh, then, um, then obviously the cost would be more. So it's going to be driven by the use of the property and the perceived risk, what the ex potential exposure is. I'd like to ask Nick, uh, do, you, do you see any major problems in redeveloping that? Um, from your standpoint? No, I mean, with the soil management plan that we have in place, um, I, I feel pretty confident that if someone were to, you know, a few years down the road said, hey, we want to redevelop this and do this, this, or this, um, that we could work with them uh, to um, do that in a responsible way and hopefully a cost-effective way. I mean, deed restrictions, uh, environmental covenants on property are, are part of what happens on all our sites, basically. Um, VRAP has had, since its inception, uh, 900 sites supply to the program. We've so far resolved probably about 725. Um, and the major probably 90% of those have some type of deed restriction. A lot of them now have soil management plans. Um, it's, you know, so we anticipate um, what may happen in the future, what's happening now, what the situation is, what the risks are, address those now. But we also anticipate things may change in the future. That's why we have soil management plans on these. That's why we have um, the deed restrictions, so someone doing their, their due diligence on the property is going to find this and say, hey, you know, this property has some restrictions on excavation. How do we deal with it? Then they come to us, and, and we figure out how to best work things out. And, and you know, then, then it also helps folks um, make an informed decision of what they're getting into. You know, some, one person might look at the property and say, well, I want to do this, and I'm willing to spend X amount on the environmental issues, where someone else's risk tolerance might be very low and say, well, I'm not going to spend a nickel more on, on environmental. So um, I, I think we're able to work with people on those issues. It's not an onerous process. Uh, we, don't, we don't like to make it an onerous process. And, um, uh, you know, so I, I think it's just there to, to notify people, to have people go into this, you know, with, with both eyes open. And certainly from my perspective, um, when you're dealing with properties that have potential environmental contamination or environmental contamination, until you have quantified that contamination, it, it's very hard for people to um, want to purchase that property or, or to uh, put any money into it. Um, we have a property here 
that, you know, has whatever value it has in, in the real estate market in Caribou. Um, but we know what the environmental issues are. We know what the conditions are going forward. So I think uh, as opposed to a site that you might not know any of that, but you have rumors, uh, we know a lot about this site. And, and through the VRAP, it probably has regained some of its value. Um, not lost value. You know, a property really doesn't have value until you know what the problems are. Um, so I guess that's our perspective on it. Councilman Richardson. Yeah, so, um, it was stated that there's little, uh, um, little chance of groundwater contamination. Right. Is it little chance or no chance? And, and the reason I ask that is because our, our drinking water happens, lives about two miles north of that in, right. a, deep, uh, in a deep well yep. off an aquifer. Yep. Um, and from experience with past projects over time, we found that um, petroleum product and gases move yep. e even through rock. So that, I, that would be my concern, I guess. I, I, I think there's um, the, the level of contamination is very low. Um, I, and from what we've seen, you know, the low permeability of the soils and all, I don't think um, <coughs> it's very likely. You're saying it's two miles away, et cetera. We have a pretty steep gradient, of course, because, uh, you know, that's a pretty steep hill on that side uh, going down to the river. The, the rivers are usually places where the water, groundwater will want to discharge. Um, and, uh, you know, I, said, I think we feel pretty comfortable with where we're at. I mean, we had wells all pretty close to where the source area if you will, uh, was, and, and we didn't really find these impacts. Um, so petroleum is also one good thing about petroleum that we know from years of, of working with it is that, um, yeah, it, it, it can travel a long way, and you put a well in that's pumping a lot, uh, you, you're going to have more of an influence in an area. But also one of the good things about petroleum is, is that a lot of uh, the petroleum compounds um, biodegrade better than than some of the other compounds, the chlorinated solvents and stuff like that, we have at sites that are more recalcitrant. So, I, I think that um, you know, I think that a that a water source a couple miles away certainly, um, I, I would feel comfortable saying there's there's no risk at this site, there's no risk from this site to that water source. Council McDonough. Uh, so. I can interpret that with the covenants and the soil management <coughs> plan that basically the protections that we're probably questioning are, are built into that. Yes. Okay, thank you. I just have a quick question too. Um, the Brown property that you referenced, that is now owned by the CP as well, it's yes. my understanding. So if a person did want to develop, would that um, property probably be the better choice with, like you said, a, a parking lot behind it or whatever, because there's probably little <coughs> or no contamination on that piece of property? Um, you tested the well. Do you think that there's anything that... I, 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 that would be the better parcel, I guess, right. to, to develop. And, and, yeah, I think the, the perfect use of the, the area that we've identified, you know, mm -hmm. where the contamination, where, where the residual contamination is, I, I think that would be a great spot for a parking lot, right. for a building I mean, like that. But, uh, um, you know, I, I never say 100% no to anything. Um, you know, we put those deed restrictions out there as a notice um, to, to have people informed, but certainly if, if someone comes in with a plan and uh, they have the funding and all to to do it and do it in a responsible manner, I mean, we're, we're kind of open for anything. Um. So how much of the property is owned by CP? Is it, it's not just the red square, is it more than that? Uh, yes. Yeah, the, red, the red is just where the plant was, the bulk yeah. plant was, for the most part. Um, it's right in here. Yep. And the gas station was kind of on the corner, that's why I've enlarged the square mm -hmm. a little. Uh, they they own up into here, and I think it comes over. There's an old uh, just potato distillery building here. They don't own that. It's on a private property. So the, the property line runs down through here. So they would own kind of all that. Okay. And then the railroad corridor that runs through, through where that corridor runs through. Um, and the brown, this lot here was where the brown had a house that the city took it for taxes, and then the uh, different departments. Anything else? So, so okay. I guess just to repeat that the, the city 
we'll have no onus to, to clean this up should it come to actually digging up soil and moving it. It's not on the city to do that. If, if the city's not the owner, um, it's not responsible. And and if the city were to acquire, there, there are protections for municipalities, as you probably know, for involuntary takings. So, you know, you foreclose on the property. Not that we see that as likely, but um, um, you foreclose on the property. You know, it, it, if you do something by involuntary taking, you're not going to be responsible um, as long as you um, responsibly manage that property. I guess if you went out there and say the first thing we're going to do is find the contaminated soil, dig it up, and throw it all on the surface, that might not be responsible management of the property. Um, but but as long as you're you know practicing um, responsible practices of the property, I, you know you're not going to get that responsibility. <coughs> Anything else? All right. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. We appreciate your taking the time to come out and educate us a little bit. I almost fell asleep, asleep reading this through here. <laughs> so. I didn't want to overwhelm you, but I felt it was good to give you everything we had so you could have all the pictures we want to take care of. All right. Well, thank you very much. Next item is tax acquired properties. Manager, please. The city has tax acquired several properties and pursuant to the tax acquired property <coughs> policy, we're, asked, we're bringing a list of these properties to the council tonight to put out for bid. Uh, we would like to pull uh, number four, um, map 11, lot 58A uh, from this list if we could. And we would also ask that the council would put properties 11 and 12 out to bid together as or sorry, 11 and 20 out to bid together as 20 would have no access to the road without property 11 <coughs> along with it. And on the following page, we've also uh, tax acquired uh, the property listed there, which we plan on removing as part of our slum and blight removal projects for 2015. Uh, it, is there a reason for pulling out number four or is it? Uh, we we want to try and do a little bit more due diligence to try and find uh, any remaining members of the Cochrane family. All right. I know where it is now. It's yep. a cemetery. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and we had uh, Wayne Vaughn about 53 Katahdin. Right. So that would be number 11 and perhaps 20 as well. What's the total taxes due on that? You know? On number 11? Mm. Yeah. It would be the 3,023 and 74 cents. Uh, uh, so 2012 would have been foreclosed on? Correct. 2013 paid? No. 2014 paid? No. So that the amount listed for the tax amount on books is all of the um, the entire taxes, <coughs> 12, 13, and 14, up and I think those numbers were good through Friday when that list was pulled. So it's... So then his total tax bill for 12, 13, and 14 is 3,023? Correct. That's the total amount owed on that piece of property. Okay. Um, I know in the past there's been other issues and you pointed out between number 11 and number 20 that they should probably go together because you can't access one after the other. Have we checked the other properties for similar issues as far as, because I know there was one in the previous that the house was on lot and it was surrounded. Um, I don't know if you recall that or not. It was in the six months ago or whatever it was. But are there, are there any other uh, issues with with lots and um not that i'm aware of i don't believe with this one i um we were informed this morning that uh for number 10 the mobile home is actually not a part of this property tax record that's a separate tax record so the mobile home is not there it would simply be the uh the land <coughs> but as for a uh, parcel being landlocked or anything like that yeah. none of them on like this last one i think was a building maybe i'm trying to remember that someone help me out here Please, I'm dying. Yeah. And I that I, was the building with no land under yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure there are no we don't have any other conflicts. There's none of those here. No. 
So these have been foreclosed. Correct. So what's the recourse for Mr. Vaughn, is it? According to the tax acquired policy that was adopted by the council, he would have to bid on the property. So this is a done deal. According to the policy. So you would have him bid, according to policy, you would have to bid on the new lot that would be combined. If the council chooses to put them out to bid as one, um, it would be the combined, correct? So the minimum sale price as recommended there would be the 10500 But the taxes owed to this point is thirty-two hundred bucks. Correct. The methodology used to come up with the uh, minimum sale is twenty percent rounded up to the nearest hundred. There is also uh, money owed to the CUD as well that would come out of those proceeds from this, that the city would receive. Yeah, it says they owe seven hundred there. Right. Um, Austin, this that property is already in a WT Holdings LLC, so that isn't in his name? That's, that's my company. Oh, that's your company. Oh, okay. Is this a rental property or what is it? You must have received several notices, haven't you? On I did. I just missed the timing of that being out of state. And that was definitely. I can't blame anybody else. I can't blame anybody else at all. Okay. You haven't paid any taxes on that particular piece of property mm -hmm. since prior to 2012, correct? Did you purchase the property through a tax acquired sale at the time or was it? No, no, that one was uh, state housing. Uh, and I was familiar with that back piece too because they messed up. The back piece was supposed to have gone with the, with the house and when they foreclosed, they didn't foreclose properly so they left the back piece hanging. And then I had communication with the lady that owned it but was basically stuck with it. And I guess she just ended up you know, not doing anything with it. How many tenants do you have there now? Tenants? Uh, it says it's occupied. Yeah, yes. There's a, there's a, 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 a family, a lady, and uh, a couple of children. I think there's three or four. Any other questions from council? on that or any of the others what does council want to do with these properties well we have a policy we just changed we need to follow it in my mind that's what I'm thinking so I I move to uh, put these out to bid except for number four was it correct yep. and to combine 19 and 20 11 and 20 sorry 11 and 20 I'll second that moved by Councillor Martin seconded by Councillor McDonough to put the uh, 
tax acquired properties out for bid. Uh, are, are we going to put these all out at one time, or do we? Yep. Okay. We'll, we'll put the ads out in the paper <coughs> this week or next. Any other questions, comments, Councilor McGovern? Yeah. Uh, again, what's the, what's the reason for number four again? It turns cemetery. out that's cemetery. cemetery. It's a cemetery. Right. Up yeah. A private cemetery for the okay. Cochran family. Trying to find more relatives, see if anybody would have interest in it. I, I just, there's a, I do have kind of a concern that Mr. Vaughn is going to be out his investment in this property plus fixing it up. Um, and, and in order to get it back, he'll, he'll be in additional monies <coughs> well in excess of the taxes owed. I agree that we have a policy. Um, but that's why we sit on council in case we need to decide one way or another on a policy. I should think if he shows a willingness and, and ability to pay the taxes. In, in past days, you were allowed up to the 11th hour to pay your taxes. Um, apparently, he hadn't heard the difference. I think I think That's I can concern. understand what you're saying, but the thing about it is, is that they got they got almost three years from the or 30 months from the time that that, that the commitment is made for the taxes to pay the taxes <coughs> for that year. Plus, he hasn't paid the, the, the subsequent years either. So now all of a sudden that, uh, you know, he's not doing his due diligence and we're trying, and we can't keep fluctuating on the policy one way or the other. We're either going to stick to it or we're not, you know, and it's unfortunate that these things happen. But we, we need to be fair in our assessment as far as the process that we do use. And it's hard for the administration if we come up here and change our minds every time we do something. Other than that, you know, I'm done. <clears throat> well, and also, I think that we made it clear now in the letters, right? We, they've been rewarded, right, and it's been, yeah. All right, we so. use the standard state statute laws that we have to, and there's a red flyer that goes in with all the letters that very plainly says that <clears throat> after this date, you'll have no yeah. chance to, to recourse. Yeah. I guess just as looking at the economic development standpoint, I hate to take the foil of a businessman that's trying to do business in our community. Anything else? We have a motion on the floor to put the properties out for bid as listed with the exception of number four and to put 11 and 20 together. All those in favor? Opposed? I knew that was going to happen. Mr. Bush says you're the decider. <laughs> yeah. There is $3,023 only on taxes. Let me ask one question. Are you prepared to pay the full amount? What's owing on taxes on this property? I am. CED2 has to be paid, I think. And there's two hundred and eleven dollars on the back parcel. And the utilities as well, huh? The right. caribou utilities. Let me ask you another question, Mr. Vaughn. You you say you have other houses that you rent? What position are they in as far as taxes are concerned? Well, some of them are current, some of them have taxes that are due. Um, it's a variety of stages. And, uh, Do you have other properties that are two or three years behind? I don't like to pay my taxes. I do it because of the cost of doing business and fixing and just the economy. It's not an easy, I don't know if any of you are landlords, it's not the easiest business. In fact, most people won't be a landlord because it's pretty tough. In fact, they wonder why do I do it. But there's a, there's a need. People need housing. And you know, if nobody does it, where are people going to live? I see houses all over, all over the place that are just empty, just sitting there. And they're sitting there because the people that own them don't want to put up with being a landlord. They don't want to put up with all the aggravation. Oh, I understand that. And so, uh, you know, also, I, when you're trying to sell your house, <coughs> sometimes it isn't the best idea to put tenants in. No, no, I understand. But these are houses that are owned free and clear. People just have them sitting there. They just they 
could rent them if they want, but they don't want to because of the dog costs and aggravation. So I, I just, I just, I guess I'm pleading my case, the fact that there, there is a lot of cost, there is a lot of risk, there is a lot of, I mean, I get beat out of thousands of dollars of money every month and every year. So I, I basically I'm doing the best I can to, to pay, to keep everything going, to pay my bills and stuff. I, if I didn't want to pay and, and stay, you know, try to get a good track record going and, and keep a good track record going, I wouldn't be here tonight to try to... Uh, I understand all that. Yeah, now I'm sure you understand that the city needs to pay its bills too, and its income is taxes. And when people don't pay the taxes, it makes it very difficult for us to pay our bills. So I understand your situation. We have the same one. <clears throat> Let me ask you this. Are you willing to bring all your taxes up to date? I'm actually working on doing that. I, I, don't, I don't have any other taxes due in Caribou, but uh, I'm working on that throughout. Oh, you time. don't have any other due in Caribou that no, are behind? No, because I only had one on Pleasant Street, and we bulldozed that. The neighbors and, uh, uh, took it and bulldozed and made a nice park over on Pleasant Street. Um, and I had one on Washburn Street that's uh, now <coughs> So that's the only the two I have. But yes, to answer your question, yes, I, I, I would. I'm probably going to surprise a lot of people. But I... Uh, <clears throat> I do not approve of putting the list out as is. So that motion dies to put all the properties out. If someone would like to revise a motion. I move that we put this uh, properties out to bid, uh, excluding uh, lot number four and also uh, uh, not lot number, but uh, property number 11 and 20. Can you uh, include that motion that uh, not to include 11 and 20 if the taxes are paid in full? I would. I would include that in my motion. When are you putting the, When would you put this list out? Probably this week if we can. Otherwise, it would be next Wednesday that the list would go out. So it has to be out on Friday? <coughs> it would hit the papers on Wednesdays. I don't know if we'll be able to get it done. We're going to try to get it done tomorrow. Otherwise, it'll be next Wednesday. The following Wednesday. <clears throat> so can we make the motion that you, uh, with the exception of those, if the taxes are paid in full by Friday, if not, property 11 and 20 will be included in the list? So move. Second. Question. Question. What do you mean by paid in full? 2012, 15, no, and 14? No, the full taxes and the, the Caribou Utilities District money. For 2012 or all? All up to date. $3,023 a full amount. Plus. 74 right. cents plus the Caribou Utilities District. And is there any interest on that or anything that's not shown here? Uh, Anyway, so let's make it the taxes are paid. The ca taxes in the Caribbean Utility District are paid in full by the end of this week. Paid in full by the end of this week. That's the spirit of my motion. On 11 and 20. Correct. I, I have a question. 20 is not necessarily is okay a, part, a, a part of that yeah, package. No, it isn't. So That's right. why are we including that with the left uh, But it won't be sold. Know. Although Mr. Vaughn may bid on that and buy it now. 
sorry, well, say that well, again. Well, I missed that. I'm sorry. We can't. We can't make him pay taxes on property 20. he doesn't own. On 20, so 20 could actually go be put out. Yeah, he could purchase that if he wanted to, one that's advertised. So I guess it's... I'm sorry, I admit, I admit 20. I'll revise yeah. my, my motion. Motion's revised to include property 11 only. Second. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? The motion passes. Just so you understand, Mr. Vaughn, I don't normally do that, and it won't happen again with you. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next item is the uh, Public Safety Complex Study Committee. Thank you, Mary Eakin. As members of the City Council are aware, we recently completed our comprehensive plan. One of the largest capital investments projected over the next 10 years is the need for a new police facility in Caribou. And we're asking that the council move forward with implementing the committee that will begin studying the issue. We're calling it a public safety study commission, uh, committee because we don't want to look at the idea of building a new police station unless we're combining the idea that it might ultimately be cheaper and there may be grant money available and a system that might work better for us down the road if the community continues to get smaller in a combined facility. Uh, so this is just asking council to uh, appoint the committee. I would recommend it consist of two members of the city council a member of the planning board, the chiefs and the city manager as ex officio, of course, and then a few members of the public. I would expect that the work will take a few years to begin studying the need, begin looking at the engineering, different possibilities, mm -hmm. grant writing, and going from there. But this is the start of what is likely to be a several year process. And uh, we're just looking for the council to begin that process. So moved. Second. Moved by Councilor McDonough, seconded by Councilor Terrio. Any other discussion from council? Any other questions? All those in favor of going forward and forming the committee and for the study on the public safety complex? All in favor? Unanimous? Did you want to begin appointing council and planning board members now or do you want to wait till after the first of the year for a... We'll probably do it included in our organizational meeting. Okay. And that'll give us time to advertise to the public for public yeah. members who are interested. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Mayor Aiken. Yes. Did we intend to skip uh, the item regarding the uh, tax acquired, the following properties to, that, that would be for uh, removed for blight? Well, I thought that was long. part of the list and would be included. Oh. Do we need a separate motion for that? I thought it was inclusive. Yeah, I did too. I mean, we're not putting them out for bid, so. Right, no, it's uh, simply our intention to begin yeah. the process to clean those And by the time we come around to doing that, there may be something more. We want to do a little more than one of those or something, so they're just on the list now. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> 2015 Council Organizational Meeting. As per the City Charter, we need to hold our, our, our organizational meeting for the 2015 City Council on the first business day of the year. That means our meeting will be on January 2nd, which is a Friday. Since that's a Friday, I'm wondering if the council would uh, like to move the meeting up to meeting time up to 5 or 5.30 rather than the 7 p.m., which is typically done. We could also meet the day or during the day if the council desired. Really, we can do whatever the council wishes. I just would like to have the council set the time for the organizational meeting on Friday, January 2nd. What are council's feelings? Anyone have any preferences? Or? It's not a big issue, but does it have to be on Friday? Per charter, we have to meet on the first business yep. day of the year. I would prefer daytime if we could. Typically, the organizational meetings quick, 10, 15 minutes at the most, typically. Is that public? Yes. 
Anybody else have any preferences? What was your preference? Just to do it during the daytime, not <clears throat> on Friday. Uh, Five thirty or seven at night. Oh, I was thinking eight o'clock. I can't. <laughs> I, I I work. Yeah. But I don't have to be here. Well, yes, you I, do. Yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So what's the earliest you could make it, Dave? We come out and hold her in the potato house. Can we do that? I don't. Have, I mean, I, it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to do me it. either. I have lunch at eleven. If you want me to come at eleven. <laughs> Five o'clock. Can you do that, Tiffany? Yeah, that? I can figure that out. All right. Okay. No problem. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Jody, is that all right with you? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's plan on five o'clock then. Any other business? Yes. I got a uh, transportation and safety committee meeting planned for Wednesday. I think due to the inclement weather that we're potentially going to have that I'll postpone it now and then I'll pick the future date that would be comfortable for everybody unless you want to do it right now. Huh? Yeah. Chicky Hagen's absent tonight, so if we could we try and pull together a date that is Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. Okay, that's Thanks. fine. So. You want to cancel it till then for Wednesday? Postpone it, yeah. yeah. And then we'll pick a date and let you know. Thank you. Okay? Yep. Thank you. Anything else? We'll no to adjourn. No, no. I, no, no. <laughs> nice I really wanted to do that. That's your agenda. But I wanted to adjourn. Oh. <laughs> yeah, since we're going to be going into executive session and we're going to be discussing an ongoing problem, uh, I would request that if he so chooses that uh, Councillor elect Smith should be allowed to participate. The only thing is, if he's here, just I put it out there, I don't care one way or the other, is that he's not bound by the executive privilege, that's all. That's all you have to be careful of. Yeah. That's the only concern with it. Well, let's find out if we can trust him. <laughs> <laughs> How does the rest said, of council feel? so chooses. I, I mean, does the council have any, anybody else in council have any problem with it? Nope, I don't have a problem with it. Okay. We're, we're legal with that? Yeah. Manager, please, what would you like to say? I, I, on a different topic. Oh. Sorry, a different other business. We're done with this one. Um, we were approached today by a forest management company um, interested in um, clearing some of the land that the city owns, clear, clearing the timber off. Um, and I don't know if the city has ever done that <coughs> before in the past or what the past practices are, but I figured some members of the council might have some insight or if they would like to approve any plans of clearing harvesting off or if they would leave that to the city administration yeah. the only forest management plan I ha that we had was in North Caribou at the uh, at the park park is that where this is uh, that would be one of the parcels but there's a few other ones the it's old not, it's not clear cutting is it I would guess I mean, we could do whatever the council would want to do if the council. I, I think it should come to council to just to look at. Okay. Personally, so. Anything else under other business? Well, if I can't adjourn, then I'll move to go into executive session. <laughs> well, I will announce first that we got the organizational city council meeting on January second. We have a regular council meeting on January twelfth, and another one on January twenty sixth. Now we can move to adjourn. No, we can't. No, we got to go to my motion. I'll second oh, yeah. his motion. You you did the executive session yeah. yes or no? All I'm right. sorry, I threw off the whole rhythm of the meeting. Okay, all in favor, going to executive session. Thank you, and thank you, everyone, and Merry Christmas, everybody. And if I see you again before, and Happy New Year, and Happy New Year. Yeah. <laughs>